Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome to episode 6 of our space exploration playthrough. I'm excited to, to keep playing through this mod with you guys. I've done a couple things since our last episode. Um, as you can see, these are no longer stone bricks, but this is concrete. And I've gotten quite a bit of concrete laid down. I've replaced this whole pad, and I'm working on covering the smelting area in concrete as well. Eventually we'll extend over probably to our power generation, and then back to the left, and this will be kind of the core hub of our base. I don't think I'm going to go all the way to my mining outposts since I only walk to those once in a while. I'll just maybe have little concrete roads that I can walk on to go faster. Uh, another thing I've done is a few researches. Um, nothing that unlocks technology, but I finished all of the quality of life researches to the first level, so a little bit more uh, crafting speed. If I click on the bonuses button, you can see here. I have a little bit more build distance and reach distance. I can walk, you know, 2% faster, uh, craft a tiny bit faster, and mine things a little bit faster. And then I also went ahead and did the research speed research. And then I added a little bit more copper smelting and copper mining. Although I don't think this is a full 30, but it's close, 21.45. You can see we're up to 0.55 per machine because I did the mining productivity research. So they produce 10% more ore without having to mine any extra. So we just get free ore from that. I increased my steel production to be the same length. So this can handle a full 15 iron ore per second turning into steel, which at a ratio of 5 to 1 is three steel per second and then I added a couple more radars to keep looking further to the north and the west so we can see more of that and I think that's about it so in this episode we are going to get blue science going chemical science so we'll add a new task for that chemical science and then I think after I get chemical science done, I want to start working on modules because modules are a big deal for me. I like to get productivity going as soon as possible, get efficiency modules in places where it makes sense, like miners and etc. I think I also added some lights around the base. I don't remember when I did that, but that's done. So we're going to go ahead and get blue science going. Um, I think I'll set it up over here, maybe in this area, because we have crude oil kind of available already. Our science labs are down here. We can always move our science labs somewhere else, but I want to leave some space. So I will go ahead and get, or I think we already did our hell mod setup for this. That's right. So we just kind of need to pin this and get everything routed over here. And we will need, you can hit the summary button right here to see all the buildings, beacons, and modules you'll need. So I need 55 blue assemblers, three chemical plants, and three oil refineries. Oil. So we'll produce three of those. And I'll actually only need 2.09 of those. And so we'll end up, I'm trying to decide if I just want to produce more than I need, and then I can have some overflow for things like plastic and sulfur. Or if I just, I'll just wait until I need plastic and sulfur for other things, I think. Like when I do red circuits, I think I'll just make a separate plastic line for that. Unless, let's see, how much will I need to add some more plastic? So what's nice is you can modify, for example, I can say, you know, instead of producing just the, the three plastic per second that we'll need for my one chemical science pack, I can say I want to produce 200% of that. And then that will produce an excess of three plastic per second. And so then I would need four oil refineries and four chemical plants. So I think I'll actually go ahead and do that just so that I can have some extra plastic on hand. Although I'm going to need way more than that for my red circuits. So, eh, I've changed my mind. We'll just keep it at 100 and we'll deal with more plastic later. So... I've got the oil refineries now. I need some chemical plants. One, two, three. 
And then that should do it for factories. I'll go ahead and pick up five more. Well, considering I'm going to use 55, I'll just pick up a whole other stack. So those can start refreshing themselves. And I will pick up another stack of belts. We've got plenty of inserters for now, and I will need lots of pipes. So we'll just pick up some more pipes. And then we will pin our production block. Scroll to the bottom. And I will need to route my copper. Stone. Let's go back to this view. So we need copper, iron, steel, stone brick, and coal. So we need almost everything in terms of raw resources. We just don't, we don't need raw stone and we don't need fuel, I guess. is Those are the only things we don't need. So we need to route up all the things. We've already got iron routed on this line going to our concrete. So we'll just carry that past. And I might actually use that line to be half iron and half steel. So we can have the steel line join in on that. Hmm. We'll give ourselves some room here. Oh, shoot. Not long enough. Okay, so you can only get six, I guess. There. That bothers me. So I'm gonna at least replace most of that belt with a red belt. So we will split steel off. We'll go this way with it. And we'll just continue our undergrounds. So we'll really need two belts because we're going to need three different resources coming up. So we'll just have the steel intersect with the iron there. And upgrading all this to a red belt, that'll be 15 of each per second, which will be more than enough for my concrete and blue science. And then we will split off our copper and do the same. And there's our steel. And then we will route these over around our gigantic stone crusher pulverizer, I think it's called. Okay, so we've got all of those resources. Stone brick. I guess I could just split off right here along with coal. So we will go ahead and do that. And again, I don't even need half a belt of each one. I only need 0.75 stone brick and 1.5 coal. So really it's iron and copper that we need the most of for this. So a half belt of each is more than enough. And then we can begin our design. So another cool thing about Hellmod is if you click on the actual building, it will create a blueprint it's called the Hellmod, Hellmod Smart Tool, and it creates a blueprint with the recipe already selected for the thing that it needs to craft. So that can be really handy in mod packs with tons of different recipes and tons of different liquid configurations so you can see kind of where the inputs and outputs are going to be before. so you don't have to place the building and then select the recipe and then see if it fits. You can just click straight from Hellmod. So that's a very handy, handy tool as well. So we're going to go just to the left of this coal probably up to the north a little bit here, leave ourselves some room. And there's our three refineries. And we'll get all the liquid outputs hooked up. And then power everything. Let's see. There we go. And we just need to connect water, which we can create a water well for that. We'll craft a few extras. And then our crude oil, which is right here. We need to get power connected. 
and then we will have petroleum. And then with petroleum, we need two, only two, it's a very small number, making plastic, which we will put right here. And those will each be making up to two per second. And I think we might actually end up with enough. We'll have 54, and that only uses 40. So we will have enough to make four plastic per second. So this will be a little bit of excess. And one blue inserter should be enough for each of those. And we'll need to bring over the coal for that. So we'll go up and over. We'll make those long inserters. Insert directly in. And that should be all we need for plastic. And then we'll put the plastic on a belt going this direction. And then we will need lots of copper cable, stone tablets. Okay, so we're making red circuits with the express purpose of making blue science. So again, you know, there's a piece of me that feels like maybe we should have just made a massive red circuit build that can supply both blue science and modules, but we can always, maybe we'll make our red circuit production in such a way that we can copy paste it. That feels like a good idea. We'll make it tileable. I'm gonna make this a straight line all the way across. I find that I prefer single turns instead of zigzagging belts all the way up and leaving big boxes of kind of unusable space. Okay, so we want to make a red circuit, which is just going to require the copper into the cable, the stone bricks into the tablets, and then the plastic. So we'll make that over here. How did we got one piece of coal on that belt? Okay, so we will bring the copper over, actually closer to our stone and then we'll bring the plastic back and we'll make our design this way. So we only need 7.5 and 0.75 so again we can do half belts of these things. So I will need my stone brick so we'll reverse this one and then that will meet up with my copper and we will need five and one. And those are inserting into only two for green circuits, but 12 for red circuits. Red circuits are much slower. So we'll start with the line of 12. I might actually do six and six, kind of a two sided approach. Six and they need three inputs is maybe the problem. Is there a way I can do this? with two because there's three inputs and one output so we can fit that all on two belts and then we'll just have to figure out which belt uses the most so we will need six three and three so we'll put the plastic and electronic circuits on the same belt and then we will put the cable on its own belt That should be fine. We end up using a lot more cable in the green circuits. We really need a little bit more for red circuits. So then we will input, input, and then output. I guess we'll just output on this top belt. And we'll copy that. And then we need input, input, and then output we're putting on the top belt but these are putting on the far side so these other ones need to put on the close side so the actually i prefer maybe to make it the top post edge so then this top lane we'll reverse that and that will be our red signs output or red circuit output 
And then we can copy this. We need to fix these placing on the near side of the belt, and then that should do it. We will need to power all this. Can I get substations yet is a good question. Substation. Nope. And I did notice there's actually something called power pylons, which that's it's something different. Pylon. So we will need space science for these, but there's a pylon substation that has a supply area of 64 tiles and it has a wire reach of 64 tiles. So once we get that, that'll be an easy way to power our base. But I didn't realize <laughs> that's going to be quite a while from now. We need all sorts of space science. So we're going to not worry about that. So for now, we'll just use the classic underground method. It looks like this belt. Let's see if we can. If we switch these, then they're all grabbing from the same area of each belt. And we can use undergrounds like this, just like we do with the furnaces. And then we can place a pole in each of these sections. And I think that powers everything perfectly. So now we need to, so we got that figured out. I may not have left myself enough room for the five. I want to leave this area for beacons. So I'm actually going to place them alongside here. One, two, three, four, five. Again, I think it's actually better if I just put these one farther away and do my inputs and outputs on the same side of the belt. It's something I'm trying to do more often. I think it ends up being a more efficient design in terms of space. And then we will go up. Underground belt, underground belt, underground belt. And that's exactly 15, which we have 15 per second, so I don't need to worry about belt issues. Though, because I will be adding modules and such later, I may put two of these on the close side, and this one will have one on the far, one on the close, so it can balance out. So then I could theoretically produce up to 30 with just these five constructors or assemblers. And then what I'll do is after I use the ones for the green, I'll just put it all on one side of the belt. So we've got that done. And then the green, we actually could probably figure this out in such a way that we just use this space. So the green, we just need stone tablets coming from one. So I think I'll actually put that here. Tablet. Place that in. 1.5, so then we need 4.5. So we'll actually need, I'll put two of each of these. I think this could probably handle about four-ish because it's got a stack size of two now, but we'll just make sure that we have enough input of wires coming this way. And then we will have our output placing onto, let's see, I, I said I wanted the wire to be on this top belt. So then we'll place like so. So our green circuits will be on that top side. We will need plastic to be on this bottom side and then the wire will be coming up around here. I think we can go like this. It's a little messy, but it'll work. And that should do it. So then our wire, oh, it'll be on the top side though. We want it to be on the bottom side. So we'll do this. Or, there we go. So then the wire, whoa. nope, that's still on the top side. Uh, let's see, how can we do this? Better. So to be on the bottom side, we need Let's see. I don't know why this is confusing me so much. So we need to be on the bottom side of the belt, which could just be like that. So maybe we'll just do that. That'll be simpler. It takes up a little bit more space, but that's okay. 
and then the wires will be on the bottom side of the belt and our circuits will be on the top side of the belt. We'll power this. And I think that takes care of everything here. I can put some beacons here later, so we should have enough room for beacons, which is something I want to pay attention to. And then these I need to move down to be here. And now we've got our five assemblers going three per second. Let's make sure they're, yeah, that fast inserter is more than enough for each of them. So we're outputting all of our circuits. Oh, we just need our stone input for the tablets. We'll just, turns out I actually didn't even need, interesting. Okay, I don't need copper up here at all. That was kind of a red herring for me. So we really can just bring the stone right here, and that'll be good enough. And we don't need... We only need the coal going up to the right, so we'll just change this to be underground, pushing out. And then no need to have stone on this belt. Some brick. Get rid of all of our coal at some point. And then we will place our. Let's see why? Oh, I never put my water well down. Just place it here, I guess. And there's our petroleum. And there's our plastic. And so we need to run our plastic down and around. I feel like this is a fairly inefficient design, but I'm okay with that. And we need it to go on the bottom side of this green circuit production. So if we have an underground going here, so we just need it to be on the right side, which means the top side. That should do it. Beautiful. The red circuits are now singing. Max rate claims we'll get 1.5 per second from all those. Looks like they're all at least running with the little green lights. And that will be good enough for our one blue science per second. Amazing. Okay, so we need copper, I mean iron plates and steel plates. And I think that's all we need for engines. And then we'll need sulfur. So we'll put one more of these plants. I have not researched sulfur yet, apparently. Here it is. Sulfur processing. So we'll get that here in a second. And then I will set a an overflow for plastic. So output priority right, and we need a mini loader. Actually, don't need a mini loader. It's not going to be fast enough to use a mini loader. And these stack to 100. I probably won't need more than 2,000 plastic on hand. So over time, we'll just build up a stock of plastic for when we need it. And we can get going on engine production. Which I will actually... Let's see, I'll have my 16. Let's kind of think out, out loud here. We'll have my 16 red signs. I think I'll put them about here. I don't want to use this area for anything. We'll leave some space. So then I want my engine production to actually be... I guess above it. We'll go up here. It's kind of out of the way. Maybe I should... Maybe it would just be easier to produce engines down in the bottom left and just route them up. That sounds better to me. 
which means I went through all this work of routing for nothing, but that's okay. Oops, that up on accident. So, oh, shoot, undo. How many times can I undo is the question. Because we do need that, that iron for Good enough. We'll just leave that there. Maybe we'll need steel up here at some point, so. But I don't need it to go past, is what I can erase. I've run out of inventory space. So this is why I leave some blocked off, is so that I can place excess into a chest, and then when I come back and take more iron, I'll take it from the bottom. And that way I always have some space to get rid of what I have. I need to do that with my coal as well. Probably don't even... I don't know if I even need one stack of coal, but we'll have it on hand just in case. I can pick these up. Okay, so on to engine production. We'll do that over here to the left of our military science. And we need two making gears, which go into both motors and engines. And so we will make those. And the only things that use plates are all kind of here in a row. So we'll just go ahead and make two, leave some space, two gears, we'll put those on a belt, this will be motors, taking from that belt, and then we need two making pipes, like so placing on a different side of that belt. Pipes, motors, gears. And then we will place our motors on a different belt. We'll actually place the pipes on a different belt so that we can bring the steel down on this belt. Like so. Because we'll just need the steel directly into engines. So we'll place these on the close side. These will be the gears. Manufacture. These will be the pipes. This will be motors. And then pipes and motors. So motors will be on this far side. So these need to be on the close side. And then we'll have gears on the close side getting used into the motors. That should be plenty to grab it because it'll be able to grab from either one since it's picking up from here. And then we also need to pick up plates. Forgot about that. Is there a better way I can do this? I think there is. We'll actually place this here. We'll place the plates directly in. And then we will go underground here. We will output like this from the motors. And then we need to take gears this can go farther. So we'll do something like this. The gears this is where Bob's adjustable inserters continues to come in handy. So I can do that to put gears directly in. We will only need one gear per second for the motors. So if we have this one producing 1.5, we don't need to worry about taking from the other one. And then we can put the iron into here from that square. So the iron can go into all three of these machines from this one square. And then we will place onto this belt, put a power pole there, and then we'll be on the close side. So we'll change the pipes back to the far side. We don't need that. We 
do need that. So we got pipes on the far side, motors on the close side, and then the gears will be on the close side. So that should do it. Play some power poles. And now we just need our iron to come down. We will put a splitter here. Maybe we'll go a little bit ahead of that. And that should get everything ready for our engines. Which we need 14 assembly machines. That is so many. And I don't think we can do what we did last time with the red circuits because now we have four inputs. So we have two separate belts. Of course, I need iron for the pipes as well. There we go. So we've got everything we need. I am trying to think about the way that I want to do this. Do I want one long line or do I want two separate lines? Maybe we'll just do one long line here. We've got plenty of room. I want to leave space for smelting out to the left, so I'm going to go sideways. So we will actually just use as little room as possible. And I think I'm going to use undergrounds and sideways inserters so that we don't have to have an extra space. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then these are motors, or I mean engines, which I thought would have been in here. Have I not researched them yet? Look at me go. I have not researched engine units. So we'll get that going. And we'll think about how we want to set up our inserters. So we will need to underground across four, because we'll need four inserters. And we can just do something simple like this. This one is a little interesting. I should have moved it over one. But we can do something fancy for this corner. So I should just be able to copy this and paste, paste, paste. That should do it. We'll power. We'll go with above the left inserter. And then we will again use underground belts to make it skinnier, but we need more red undergrounds. We'll go ahead and take more inserters as well. We ran out of those. I don't want an odd number though. Okay. He needs power. Make these engine units. All of those are running. Perfect. And we will do the same thing. And we'll place using 90 degree inserters. And we will power those like that. Okay, so I think we've got all of our engine units producing, and we will run those up and over. Considering I'm going to use them over here, I think I'd rather run them, I'll run them through the middle of my science. So something like here. I can, when I place beacons later, I can use undergrounds and things to avoid getting in the way of beacons. I can even be clever and use my empty space here. 
Okay, so we've got our engines. We just need to make this one produce sulfur, and then we have all of our ingredients. So we will combine our red circuits with sulfur. Bring our engines over. We need water here. There's our sulfur. And now we can place 16 assembling machines. And I think I will do one side again, just for simplicity. But I'll put them on the other side with the engine. Again, I really didn't prepare my research here. We haven't researched the actual technology yet. But it'll be done by the time we need it. So we will place Long inserter going in, short inserter going in, and these two will place on the close side. And then we can use undergrounds to power. I guess we don't even need undergrounds for the power for this. So we'll do that. Blue science. And then we'll need Something like something like that. We'll power four, and then we can copy paste this four times. Two, three, four, and that should be our sixteen. We need some more red belts. We're very close. I can probably handcraft. Just a few more. All right, and then we need to be placing like this. We'll put our poles in there. Copy paste this. Everything looks powered. Looks like we're good to go. Good to go. Play some lights. And we've got blue science, which we will bring down over the radar. And we will go ahead and do that. I'll switch the military science side, but that's okay. We'll just put it all back in the chest. And then we will need a chest for our science here. Get some mini loaders. So the mini loaders you can see have to be powered and we will stop that at five stacks. And here they come. First blue science, the fruits of our labors. So now we can think about what we want to research. We've got chemical science complete. What researches can give us the biggest boost? We can do lab research speed. Capacity bonus is only for stack inserters. Mining productivity too is probably the first thing we want to do. So we will do that. Batteries unlock all sorts of things. But we can get Module twos, as soon as we have processing units and processing units, really, they're just very expensive. 
but we already have all the technology we need to produce them. And then we can work on industrial furnaces. Okay, so we'll work on modules first. We will get regular modules researched along with tier one of each type. So we'll research those. And then we can focus on Helmod. module. You can see we can get all the way up to a speed module 9 eventually, which will require all sorts of crazy things that we do not have yet. So we'll start with one of each module per second. I think that should be okay. Each module requires three of the one before it, so by the time we get to tier 9, that's going to be in the thousands and thousands of regular speed modules. But I think one per second is more than enough for now, because then that'll be a third per second of the other ones, which is still, you know, 20 per minute. And then we'll get about five, six per minute of tier three. So for now, that'll be fine. And we need the other two add recipe module productivity and module. You know, I think I could have just clicked multiple times here. I didn't need to type it in three times. One of each. And then that's 15 and three. So this will use a lot of resources. It's 45 copper cable. 22.5. Should have done this first. We'll move these down. 37.5 copper plates and 5.25 stone bricks, which we know there's really only one way to make once we get vulcanite blocks. I guess we can make a more efficient version, but we don't have vulcanite blocks yet. So for now, we'll just need stone. I think I have enough stone bricks to handle this, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make new stone bricks. But copper plates, wow, 37.5. We definitely do not have that much. That's more than one full red belt. So we may we may create a whole new mining section and smelting section just for the copper for this. And I might settle for 30 copper per second. It won't quite do the full one of each per second, but you know, you don't end up using one per second of everything. So I think more I'm interested in having the capacity to produce one of any of them per second. But once it gets saturated, I don't think I'll be using the full 37. So I'll probably tone this down a little bit. What we can do is we can figure out the percentage that will just need 30 per second. So is that 80%? Yeah, so 80% will use 30 copper per second. And then we will only need Let's see. I probably should do this differently. If I only need 80%, then really what I'm saying is I want 0.8 of each of these per second. Because we're going to need three of these anyway. So this way it'll just show me what it requires in terms of throughput. So we only need 4.81 plastic bars rather than the full six. And we'll get that going. Again, we'll need some more oil, but we can just add on to the same oil area, but have these route to a different place. So that's all good. And we just need to work on a entire line of copper. And let's see if our production for chemical science has been good. Looks like we have been getting one per second, 64 per minute. So that's great. Seems we have plenty of engines, or at least the right number of engines, and red science as well. We will want to stockpile some red science, though I'm producing exactly the amount I need, so that won't happen for a while, but we'll go ahead and get it ready. 
We'll just do a few stacks of red circuits. I think I said red science. I meant red circuits. Okay, so we will go ahead and think about what we need. We will need a lot of electric mining drills. I maybe should automate these at some point, but I can probably wait till I get robots for that. So I don't have to set up all sorts of new belts. We'll take a few more stacks of the electric motors. So I think that's 40. I've got crafting. We'll replace all of our motors and gears. And then we'll get some more inserters. Just kind of restock on everything. We used up we used up a lot in this last production area. And we need more power poles. Up to 100. I didn't end up using anywhere near as many pipes as I thought I would, so I'm going to ditch my leftovers here. I don't think I need this many stacks on hand. And we'll re-up on our splitters and underground belts. We'll grab two stacks of those. We might need them because we're doing an entirely new line of copper, so we'll take all of my red belts. And we'll get rid of our yellow belts. And I think we have everything we need. We'll need a lot more steel furnaces as well. So I can grab some more stone. Stone brick for that. Which we already have quite a bit of, so... That should be good for now. And we can run over and start working on some more copper. I think this patch will be enough. We've got 1.6 million, so that'll last us a while. Okay, so we will go ahead and just extend each of these lines and then we'll just balance out to two full red belts. So I've been leaving two spaces. You know, this drill will cover the first and the other drill will cover the second. It's not quite as compact, but that way I can fit some turrets in between them. You know, I might just copy this and paste it. It's a lot easier. I don't think I need one there. It would run out pretty quick. I'll do one more. Okay, so we've got our three lines. We could add another line up there. All together, this is only 39, so we will keep going on the miners. We only have six more, though. I will need some more. Six, that's 12. 15, 20, I think should be enough. I need my rocks and trees deconstruction. And we will cancel some of these furnaces to get the miners done sooner. And we'll add some more furnaces back in. That guy ran out. So we'll copy paste this a few more times. I think both of these together will not make more than one red belt, so I don't have to worry about multiple red belts here. Yeah, only 18 miners, so we would need quite a few more than that. So we can use our balancer design to Let's see, how does it go? Need three spaces, I think. 
and then media announcer there. I think that's right, because then these two are the same, and these two are the same, and then we're mixing this one and one from the other guy, and then we're mixing these two. So, yeah, that'll do it. And then... I guess to make it pretty, we can just, since we only want two output belts, we can just make it look like that. Which then means we don't even need... Oh dear. We can just do that, since we only have two output belts anyway. I've run out of inventory space. I guess if I craft some more steel furnaces, we should be able to pick everything up. And now, with all of my miners going, we would get 47, which I think is enough. It's not a full 60, but I think it's enough to do what we need to do. And I still need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more miners. I have neglected to place quite a few belts, though. And just for completeness, I think, can I craft? Yeah, I can craft enough more. I think I'll do, although I've run out of electric motors, I kind of want to use the full patch. So that way we don't have to come back here later. Because we've got everything being used except for this stuff down here. And we will need more turrets. So where does the copper start? So right here is the first one. So that miner will get everything and then we need to go all the way to here. And I'm going to space these out so I don't need as many. One, two. That'll work. And we'll have this be able to go on both sides of the belt. And this way we will use all of the entire 1.6 million eventually. And we'll need some more turrets. I'll place some walls around them. I think I have some walls. That way it's a bit more resistant to attacks. Let's see. Oops. Did I just place... Oh, shoot. Did not mean to do that. I placed quite a few blueprints. That's unfortunate. I think I got rid of them all, though. Okay. So I was just trying to see where an attack might come from but we'll probably put one here as well. And that should be good enough. It is kind of annoying. Phil, for me, doesn't work with nanobots placing, so you have to place manually if the nanobots end up putting things down. I assume the same is true for construction bots as well. Okay, so we have our full copper production. Now we can run this line over to our smelting. And then I will just copy paste our smelting line that we've already created for the first line of copper, and then that will input into our modules. So we will do our second line of copper right here. I think I have room for a second. Yeah. So we'll just go straight up here, and then we'll work on our module production. I may actually just fit it in to the side here, or I may snake all the way through the base. We'll see. But I think that is something I will do off camera because I'm just copy pasting the exact design we already have. That's not very interesting. And so we will work on the actual module assembling in the next episode and I'll work on placing some more concrete and then maybe any other busy work items that need to happen. I might do a couple more quality of life researches as well and research a few more technologies. But until next time, thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments.